Welcome to the undersea world of the Little Mermaid. An amazing place. Swimming with fantastic creatures and mysterious secrets. But in real life, life under the sea can be just as incredible. So come on, dive in and explore the real life sea animals that inspired the characters in The Little Mermaid. Flatfish flounder, but he actually shares more in common with the colorful tropical reef fish. Did you know that there are about 4,000 different types of tropical fish? What about that one? You got it, flounder. He's a tropical reef fish just like you. Cool. Some of these colorful fish have wild fins, but they're not just for show. They flare up these massive fins to scare off predators and tell them to back off. The tropical reef fish use more than just their fins to communicate. They also use bright colors as a way to send messages to other friendly fish. With one look, a fish can tell how old another fish is and whether it's a male or a female. Fish like to stick with their friends, so they travel in groups called schools. But when different types of fish hook up in the same group, it's no longer called a school. Do you know what they call it? It's a tingle hopper. Um, no. It's called a shoal. Traveling in these groups keeps them safe and keeps them from becoming lunch for another bigger fish. <laughs> By sticking with their pals, a big group of small fish can scare a big mean fish away. Whoa! Ah, oh, and then we're safe. I guess that means that Ariel, Flounder, and Sebastian are more than friends. They're a shoal. <gasps> Don't be a shiny fish. Crabs belong to a group of sea animals called decapods, which literally means ten-footed. Both male and female crabs have claws, but the males have bigger claws, which they use to get the attention of females. First, we've got to create the moon. But of course, there's more to that than claws. You gotta pop up your lips like this. Some crabs have one very large claw, which they use to fight off their enemies. Some crabs don't look much like crabs at all. Oh! I can't believe these guys are crabs. You don't you shake your head at me, young lady. Most crabs spend their time hanging out underwater, but certain crabs dig holes on the shore to live underground. Peculiar. In this way, crabs actually help out the environment, just like earthworms breaking up soil underground. It's time to talk about the amazing seahorse. I've been looking all over for you. I've got an urgent message. The seahorse got its name because its head looks like a small horse. Do you see the resemblance? But these little guys are nowhere near as big as regular horses. In fact, most are less than six inches long. They swim slowly in a vertical position. And did you know it can move its back fin back and forth 35 times a second? Look closely and you can see. Pretty impressive, huh? Make way for the big, bad shark. shark. Sharks are the most highly evolved predator on the planet. These guys are big time carnivores, which means they eat meat. Sharks have many rows of teeth, but with all that biting, they lose their teeth pretty fast. Not to worry, each time they lose a tooth, new ones grow in. That means a shark will never, ever run out of teeth. Oh no! Sharks prefer to swim alone and don't hang out with other sharks. In fact, one of the few times you'll see a group of sharks together is if there's a feeding. But don't expect to see the great white there. No matter what, he prefers to be alone. Sharks are built for speed. With their torpedo-like structure, they can move super fast. In fact, some sharks, like the bull shark, use their crescent-shaped tails to shoot them through the water at 40 miles per hour. 
Can you guess what creature is trying to get away from us? What? What is it? The octopus. That's right. The octopus, one of the most fascinating creatures of the ocean, is among the cephalopod class. That means they have large heads, large eyes, and sucker-bearing tentacles. The tentacles are the arms of the octopus. Octopi have eight arms and use their arms to crawl along the sea bottom, build homes, and of course, capture food. Octopi have soft bodies and no bones. This is why they can squeeze through tight spaces to hide from predators. Wow, I bet you didn't think he could fit in there. Just like Ursula, the octopus will blast out dark liquid to confuse its enemies when in danger or mad. Uh-oh, the octopus is a master of disguise and can transform itself in seconds. It has pigment-filled organs that produce many different colors, which are controlled by the nervous system. Cool, huh? Of course. <laughs> Just like the octopus, the squid is also a cephalopod. One cool thing about squids is they have instant reverse. They can move backward and forward without turning around. Unlike octopi who like to keep to themselves, the squid prefers to hang with his buddies. Squids love a party. Put them, get them. Mores are part of the eel family called anguilliformes. Anguilla what? Anguilliformes. Mores are different from most eels. They are smooth, thick, and don't have scales. Just like Flotsam and Jetsam, most mores live in coral reefs where they spend most of their time poking their head out from under their hiding places. We mustn't look in doorways. It's a road. Just because the moray moves its jaw up and down doesn't mean it's going to bite you. Don't be scared. They do this because they need to circulate the water in their gills so they can breathe. Yow, look at those teeth. I wouldn't want to get a bite from him. Mores have razor-sharp teeth, which can be harmful to humans. But they won't bite unless they feel threatened. Even though moray eels get a bad rep, they can be friendly sometimes. Everybody needs a little love. Just imagine together forever. But they certainly aren't picky when it comes to food. They are omnivores, which means they'll eat anything. But mostly, they feed on a wide variety of crustaceans and fish, just like Flounder and Sebastian. <laughs> Sorry, guys. And they can swim backwards, too. This comes in handy when they need to get back into their crevice quickly to avoid predators. Now that we've gotten to know some of our favorite characters, is life under the sea really better than the human world? Well, at least we know what Sebastian thinks. The human world, it's a mess. Life under the sea is better than anything they got up there. 